the, the Darfur Stowe situation was I got a call from USAID's OFDA, Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance, asking or uh, describing the situation of the women and girls in Darfur camps who were being raped, quote unquote, in droves when they had to leave the camp to collect fuel wood. Uh, asking me, can I design a screw compactor so that kitchen waste could be dried in the sun, run through the screw compactor to develop dry pellets, which would then substitute for some of the field wood they would have to go out otherwise to, to fetch. Uh, it was obvious and I could, I could show that there is not enough kitchen waste to provide any significant amount of fuel. But I, it, it kept on worrying me that this was going on and a problem came to me that I couldn't solve and it was such a desperate, desperate situation. So in about six or eight months, I had dug through enough in detail to find out what were the parameters of the problem, what were they cooking, with what were they cooking, what was the food, what was the method of preparing the food. And I, I really got, it's ironic, but I really got thrilled to discover that they were cooking on what are called three stone fires, which means you have three massive stones uh, and, and a, we support a pot uh, and you light a fire in the space underneath the pot because that's the most primitive way you could you could cook and it's known to be the least efficient way to transfer chemical energy in the wood into the pot. It's about usually five to eight percent of the chemical energy in the wood goes into the pot in the three-stone fire. So I said we've got to be able to do better than that, a whole lot better than that. So that's how that stove started. Okay, and I should say that we are recognizing this year 